Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss debt covenant. Debt covenant is a topic close to my heart for two reasons. One, I was a loan officer at some point. And as a loan officer, as a lender, I went over debt covenant with clients, explaining to them what needs to be done in order to be in compliance with the loan. On the other hand, I work as a CPA. And as a CPA, I prepared financial statement for the sole purpose of making sure the customer, the client, is in compliance with, with that covenant. Therefore, I'm familiar with that covenant from both ends. But let's start this talk about that covenant. What is a debt covenant? Well, let's read that first. It's a provision or a clause, simply put, a paragraph, certain paragraph in a loan or the debt agreement that specifies certain action the borrower must take they are required to do or refrain from taking or they cannot do as a condition of the loan. When they must take, they must do this, it's called affirmative covenant or positive positive, or refrain from taking, they should not do, it's negative covenant. In essence, all what it is, rules and guidelines set by the lenders for what purpose we're going to see for one moment to protect their interests by limiting the risk in lending them money. And how, how do they measure this debt covenant? They measure it through financial indicators, which we would look at those financial indicators at some of them at the end of this recording. And those are the financial indicators that I, as a CPA, had to prepare for the bank and for the clients. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Let's talk about the purpose of that covenant. What's the purpose of it? As I mentioned a second earlier, it's to protect the lenders. When, when I was at the bank, I wanted to make sure that when we give out that loan, the customer is not spending or wasting money on anything else other than making sure they pay us first. That, 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 that was our concern. So that covenant provide protection for the lenders against the borrower's actions. Like we don't want them to go into mergers or buy other companies or pay dividend. Why not? Because they could jeopardize our position. Because if they spend that money somewhere else, that money is not, is not with them and it's not giving them the ability to pay back the loan plus interest. So simply put, we are going with the mentality of pay me first. I want to protect myself. Also, that covenant, what it does, it provides signals. What signals are, are indicators. And those indicators would help the lender basically react early on. So the signals like mandatory financial updates, we're going to see later where we have to prepare financial statements and the triggers such as breaches of financial ratios. So the debt covenant will give us indicators about what's going on with the, cl with, with the client, the, the customer that we lend them money. When they prepare financial statements, well, they have to prepare their financial ratios. And those financial ratios, we consider them as signals, as indicators what's going on with the company, which will grant the lender the right to do what? Intervene, possibly renegotiating loan terms. And this is why the lenders, the bankers, they ask customers, their business customers, to do what? To prepare audited, or sometimes they accept review. Oftentimes, depending on the size of the loan, if the loan is large, they want audited financial statements because they want the financial statements to be accurate. Therefore, they can compute the ratio, and usually they ask the auditor to compute the ratio as well for them. So that's why it's, it's, it's a good deal for auditors because the customer, they have to get their financial statement audited because the bank is asking them to do so. Why is the bank asking them to do so? Because the bank wants to look at signals. They want to look at financial ratios to figure out how well or not well the company is doing, therefore to react as early as possible. 
Now, when it comes to covenants, we have two type of debt covenants. We have, pos we have positive or, or affirmative. And as we mentioned earlier, positive is you must. It requires the borrower must perform certain action to maintain, which is the financial stability and in operational integrity of the business. So what could be some positive covenant the lender, the borrower must comply with? Well, one is when we give you the money, you have to use the money for that specific purpose because every loan comes with a specific request. If you're asking us, you want to build a new warehouse, well, you have to use the money that warehouse. If you're telling us you're, buy you're borrowing this money to purchase inventory to expand, then you must purchase inventory because the loan was giving for that purpose. You must also submit regular audited financial reports. Yeah, right? As a CPA, you love this because they have to have their financial statement audited. And guess who can audit financial statements? CPA. It's a business by itself. And I used to complete many audits for the sole purpose of that covenant. You have to adhere to the financial covenants. That's obvious. That's why they are there. You have to observe all applicable laws. Why? Because you are jeopardizing the company's integrity, uh, financial stability, so on and so forth. It permits the lender to examine company's asset and agreement. What they would do, positive, positive, a positive covenant, they give the lender the right to go to your office, go to your manufacturing facilities, inspect your assets, making sure they are as you are stating, making sure that they are insured, making sure you are keeping good business record, you are properly managing your property. Because in a sense, the bank is part of your company, it's exposed to your risk. Those are must kind of must type of thing you have to do. Then we have negative covenants. The other type is negative. Negative covenants are most crucial and heavily negotiated because here is basically what you are telling the, the lender, the, the borrower, not to do. You cannot do those things. You cannot do those things. And those things mean means what? You're putting restriction on them, negative covenant. Like what? They cannot make certain investments or they cannot make investments as long as they don't pay off the loan first. For example, just those are restrictions. They don't have to be, but I'm just giving you some examples. You cannot make capital spending. In other words, you cannot expand by make uh, make purchases of a long long term property plant and equipment because the assumption they are expensive. You cannot generate you know incur more leases or incur more debt. You cannot pay dividend. Why not? Because we want you to keep the money so you can pay us. Uh, buy back shares. You cannot buy back the shares. Go into emerging. Sell assets without our approval. Uh, prepay prepay debt or sp specifically prepay other debt for that matter or prepay our debt if those are part of the condition. And starting new business project unless you have our approval. Sell any major asset without the lender's approval. So basically those are restrictions. You cannot do any of those unless you talk to us first. And basically, you're renegotiate, you're, you are renegotiating the loan, which is you are renegotiating the whole agreement, the debt covenant. Now, we have to be familiar, familiar with what we call events of defaults. What are events of defaults? Things that could trigger that could trigger that you are defaulted. You, cannot, you, know, you, are, you are outside the contract agreement. The default section outlines condition that if met gives the creditor enhanced right because you are in default you violated the agreement this would include of course one of them is missing payments if you miss a payment well we have the upper hands now because we can force you to liquidate put you out of business you misrepresent facts we find after the fact that you are not telling the truth covenant breaches you have any covenant breaches that's going to give us the upper hand you default on other debts which is other debts that you know what's called cross default basically since you default on that debt, they're coming after your assets. We have to be careful. If you compromise collateral, basically not taking care of them, not insuring them. If there's change in control of the company or if there's any bankruptcy, change of control means there's a new ownership or bankruptcy, obviously going out of business. Any of these will trigger what's called an event of default. And here the remedies could be what? What could you do? You can rene renegotiate the terms. Take the collateral that they put up, the building, the warehouse, the inventory. You may be able to demand immediate repayment or starting bankruptcy action, depending on what you want to do, depending what what, what are the, 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 uh, the, the details in the contract. 
We also need to be familiar with technical versus payment default. What are those two? A technical default happen when the borrower violate the conditions of the loan. What we mentioned earlier, for example, covenant breaches. That's a technical default. That's a technical default. You're, you're still paying the money, but you violated certain agreement or you misrepresented the fact. However, a payment default obviously occur when the borrower fails to make a scheduled interest or principal payment. Now it's called a payment default because you cannot pay it. What would happen? What are the consequences of breaching a covenant? As we mentioned, what can they do? You have the right to call the loan. In other words, the bank says, you got to pay me back the loan. This is what called the loan is. Pay me back. You could impose a penalty depending on what the agreement is. You could renegotiate the terms, increase the interest rate. You could accelerate the payment, etc. So you could do a combination of those. The specific consequences, it all depends on the loan that agreement details. Now, let's take a look at some financial covenants, financial indicators that are common, that they are used when there is a lender-borrower relationship. The first one is current ratio, and current ratio is taking current assets, dividing current assets by current liabilities. Simply put, let's look at an example. For example, this company here, they have a half a million in assets, 250 in liabilities. The current ratio is two. And what they would say, if this is what, if this is your starting point, the bank might say you have to keep your current ratio above two. So at any point in time, for every one dollar in current liabilities, you have to have two dollars in current assets. And this is one of the covenant that I used to deal with for a funeral home, for a funeral home company. They had several fu funeral homes and they had many, many loans, many, many loans. And every quarter they needed their financial statements to be reviewed. <sighs> Thank God it wasn't audit. And as a result is I would have to prepare their annual, the, uh, not their annual, their loan repayment schedule and when you have a loan and you have many loans and those loans being refinanced like that 15 different loans and they would be refinancing don't loan those loan on regular basis when you have a long-term loan you have to find out the short-term portion and the long-term portion and every quarter we would go into a discussion how much should be in the short term how much should be in the long term why because if it's in the short term it's going to go under your current liabilities and they didn't want that because the bank imposed a stringent current ratio on them and we'll have to recompute those short term versus long term for several days a negotiation back and forth because the owner of this business again funeral home business disagreed uh, disagreed and the reason I said thank God it's not an audit because I don't know that you have to visit the client <laughs> and I don't want to visit the funeral home so <laughs> this, this is back from the trenches a story back from the trenches but this is one of the indicators or you could take current assets minus current liabilities to find the working capital and the bank might say I want my working capital to be at any point 200,000 or any any number for that matter and if you violate those numbers well there are consequences also another thing that they look at is debt to equity which is total debt total to equity for example let's assume this company 800,000 in debt 400,000 in equity the answer is two it means they have the debt is twice the amount of equity it means their assets are 1.2 million because debt plus equity equal to assets for example they would say you cannot have more than two debt to asset you cannot have more than twice your equity whatever that number is i'm just making up numbers it, they could agree on anything they're just making up numbers so simply put if you add that and keep an equity the same that's going to go above two you're violating so what you should do you should reduce your debt or reduce your equity uh, increase your equity reduce your debt increase your equity to improve your ratio another thing that they look at is interest coverage ratio or ebit earnings before interest and taxes divided by interest expense so let's assume the number is 150 divided by 30,000 that's going to give us an EBIT of uh, not EBIT interest coverage ratio of five a multiple of five and they could say for example we want your interest coverage ratio to be at least five anytime anytime it falls below five we need to renegotiate the deal or ask you to pay the loan or impose a higher rate or impose a penalty or whatever we want to do are these the only financial covenant that they can put? They can put any financial covenant they want to, but those are debt-related notice, current debt, uh, current, current liabilities, interest expense. So they're dealing with debt, but they can put any type of conditions on you. Um, what should you do now? You should go to Farhat Lectures, look at MCQs, look at additional resources if you're studying for your CPA exam, to do what? 
or studying for an accounting certification to perform better. You want to invest in yourself so you can get done. Focus on your career. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.